excited to hang out with y'all this evening. So let me know where you're tuning in from. And we're going to be going over some awesome tips for you to hopefully help you increase your engagement in your VIP group, increase your overall influence in your group, um, and maybe even help you uh, grow your group and maybe help you grow some sales and book some parties, get you some some new teammates, right? So all these tips here are going to be super crucial for you in order for you to really start to kind of see that difference in your VIP group. So super excited to hang out with you guys. Um, but let's talk about this. If you're in network marketing, if you're in direct sales, if you have a small business and your VIP group is um, kind of sucking right now, let's just say it like that, right? Maybe the engagement is not so great. Maybe no one's buying. Um, maybe your growth has stalled. Maybe some of you are having struggles with having organic conversations that help you grow your team. Maybe you're just like your VIP group is just needing some therapy. So comment below. I'm going to ask you this question here. If you feel like you're either on the struggle bus when it comes to your VIP group, or if you feel like you're cruising in the fast lane. So what's the difference between struggle bus and cruising in the fast lane? So struggle bus means that maybe you're struggling with some of the things that I've mentioned, engagement, sales, people participating, your group growing, right? And then cruising in the fast lane means that your group, the group is growing every month. You're gaining sales. People are participating. People are sharing your group with their friends. Just let me know where you stand. We're all aware. And if we're aware of it, that means that we can only go up from here. So that's there's nothing wrong with that. And we've all gone, gone through this period, by the way. Everybody goes through this period where your group booms and then something happens and it just stalls, right? A lot of it's a lot of factors that go into it too, right? So a lot of things that can go into it is A, it could be us, it could be user error, right? We could be inconsistent in our process. We can be maybe posting a little bit too much about our products and not enough about us, right? Who saw that post about branding talking about us, right? And what we like and how we use products and how we help solve problems. I saw another comment tonight of somebody that said it and really like hit the nail that nobody really teaches you this stuff when it comes to VIP groups. Like you, these direct sales companies, like they don't teach you how to have a VIP group. You guys ever notice that? Or you guys ever realize that? They don't teach you. So how are we supposed to know, right? We join these companies and we make our VIP groups. We do what we're told. And then we start talking about our products and nobody's commenting and buying. And we're like scratching our head like, why? Why isn't this working? They said it would work. Well, it's because there's a number of things that you need, okay? There's a number of things that you need. I totally get it. it's frustrating. It can be. There's a number of things that you need. And then we also have obstacles. Hopefully this will help you feel better. But Facebook is an obstacle. Who agrees with this? Okay. We're going to make this super positive here in just a minute. But you can only uh, acknowledge things when you can. Hold on. You can only create the solution to things when you can acknowledge the reality of it. Right. So the reality is, is Facebook makes things hard. You know that thing that they do that Facebook does where every few months uh, <laughs> you like something new happens. There's like a new setting or there's like a business tool or, you know, something doesn't work the way that it used to work. Right. Or now it's not units anymore. It's guides. That took me forever to figure out, by the way. And like they move things in the settings. It's super frustrating. Facebook, I'm calling you out if you're watching this. But it's so true, right? And we all face that. And then there's that algorithm thing that changes all the time, right? Where your algorithm sometimes is great. And maybe some days you have great engagement. And then there's other days where it's not so great. Well, here's what happens. Facebook does this magical thing. Okay, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you all the goods here. They do this magical thing where if you join a group and you know in your group notifications where you change things from highlights to all notification, you can do that. But guess what's gonna happen in a few months when things adjust on Facebook? It's gonna go right back to highlights. And when that happens, people start to miss your posts. So hopefully that makes you feel a little bit better that we're all on the same boat. So I want you to know, hopefully this will help you feel a little bit better, but 
In addition to the obstacles that we do face that are true, right? There's not much we could do about it. We can also do things on our part to control the preventables, okay? Because there are some preventables and there are some ways that you can overcome these obstacles and not only have a thriving group that is organically growing, but you can create super fans. I mean, you really can. You can create people that want to attend your weekly events, that want to come and hang out in your group, that want to purchase your products, that want to party with you. Okay, so we're going to go through some, I'm really going to go through three main things tonight, just so we can keep this to a 15 minute training. So there's three things that I want to cover. Okay, three main elements. But before I get to that, I want to ask you a very important question. And hopefully everybody participates in the comment. Very important question. And this might make you think a little bit, just a little differently on how you run your VIP group. So here's your, here's the question for you. There's two, actually, two questions. Number one, on a scale of one to 10, how well do you think you know the members of your group? On a scale of one to 10, how well do you think you know the members of your group? And I don't mean knowing their entire backstory and where they worked and how old they are and all the details, but a general idea as to who they are as people. If How well do you really know them? Do they have kids? How long have they been in your group? What was the last thing that they ordered? What do they love when they comment on your post? What was the last conversation you had with them via messenger? These are hard questions for some of us. I love that you commented this because here's Holly. This is a really, really good comment to comment on. It's good to reward the people that are already engaging with us. But what about the other people that may be on highlight mode because of Facebook that may be just too busy to take a look at your posts. Maybe they're not trending on their page because they haven't participated. So how do we get them to opt in? Well, we have to show them some love, right? We got to show them some love. So I'm going to break that down here in just a second. I really love that you commented that. That was such a good comment. All right, here's the second question. Ready? What is the purpose of your VIP group other than just selling your product? It's a kind of a loaded question, right? What is the purpose of your VIP group other than just to sell your product? So we're going to put the product that you sell aside. What's the point of your VIP group? What's the purpose? Has anybody ever asked you that question before? It's a tough question, right? What's the purpose? Relationships, community, relationships, okay? I love, hold on. For women to feel comfortable talking about sexual health and wellness, perfect answer. That's such a great answer. I know exactly what she does. And because I know how she helps me, I have a reason in a, to hang out because there's a purpose behind the group. So I want you guys to think about this this way. Okay. I heard, I saw relationships, community, which there's a, those are really good talking points, right? Of course you want that in your group, but the purpose of your group. Okay. When you're thinking about the purpose, if you don't have a purpose for your group, I need you to take out a piece of paper and I need you to write down some ideas as to what your purpose for your group is. Because when your group does not have purpose, then that's probably why you don't have people participating. You have to have a reason, okay? Of course we wanna sell our products. Of course we wanna be like, you should buy this bag, right? Watch me carry around my bag. Let's do some demos. Let's go live. Let's share about all these awesome products. Let me show my live unboxing. Of course we wanna do all that. We wanna sell our products, right? We wanna help people by sharing our product. But you also want to think about that you need to be solving problem too. Okay. You need to be giving that extra value. For example, right now you guys are watching me on a live training. Have you purchased anything from me at this very moment? Nope. Am I selling you anything on this very moment? Nope. Do I have a product that I'm waving around in your face and asking you to buy? No. But what I'm doing is I'm helping you solve problems. I'm giving you free education, free value. See what I'm saying? How can you do that in your group? This is the type of stuff you need to be incorporating more into your group. Value-driven content, okay? I wasn't going to break these three down yet. I've just broke down one of them a little bit. It's hard not to dive in. I'm trying to keep myself in order here, but value-driven content is so, so important. You have to have a purpose behind your group other than just to sell your products. If you sell makeup, for example, if you're still kind of wondering what that means, if you sell makeup, for example, maybe your mission is to help women feel more beautiful. Well, what is something that you can give in order for you to receive? You gotta, you gotta, here's an example of what you could do with that, right? 
you can show someone how to have a miracle morning routine, right? Maybe like a facial routine. Maybe you should cleanse a certain way. Maybe you should make sure that you have serum on your face for X, Y reason. Make sure you have SPF on every day. Those are very simple value-driven content has nothing to do with your product. But guess what? Now your group has a purpose. Now Chelsea can come into your group every day and learn something new from you and not feel like she has to buy. People don't need to feel like they have to buy. If you're making people feel like they have to buy from you, you're doing it wrong. You want people to want to buy from you. And in order to do that, you have to build what? The know, like, and trust factor. And how do you do that? By giving value. You have to give value. You have to have a purpose for your VIP group, okay? What's another example? Pampered Chef. I know we had a few Pampered Chef attending tonight. I was trying to keep up with the comments, but y'all are fast. So <laughs> Pampered Chef, okay, you can sell your pans, you can sell your utensils, or you can make recipes using that equipment. Give somebody a free recipe, right? Give them a free cooking hack. Did you know that you can cut an onion this way instead of that way, and you'll be able to get more of the onion? I'm not a cook, so I just lied to you, but I would assume a Pampered Chef consultant could teach me how to do that. So because she helps me cook better and save time in the kitchen, I'm going to watch her stuff. And guess what? Eventually, when she keeps using her pans and I keep seeing those same products over and over again because she's drawn me in with that free value, eventually I'm going to be like, you know what? I've learned so much from this girl. I think I'm going to go ahead and buy all those pans. I'm going to buy that whole thing. That's the way I shop. Don't you guys like think about the last um, purchase that you made, right? Maybe the last purchase with a direct seller that you made other than just to support someone, right? Was it because they gave you value? Was it because you actually liked that person that you purchased from them? I'm very select with like who I purchase with because I have to have a relationship with that person before I make purchases, especially in this type of scenario. Direct sellers and network marketers, what's really cool about our industry is that we're all relationship slash community folks. It's not like going to Target and then you have the person at the register just checking you out and then you never see them again, right? Unless, you know, you see them on another shift and they're like, oh, hey, it's you again. It's not like that, right? It's, it's you have a, a more in-depth relationship, right? You're focused on relationships because relationships are the driver to your business. So if you don't know what the purpose of your group is, that's okay. I want you to take out a piece of paper. I'm going to give you a homework assignment and I want you to write down other than my product what can I give because as a leader or as a consultant or as someone who is trying to build a business online it's all about what you can give to someone so that they can build that trust know and like factor with you the more you give you need to focus on give, give, give. I think Gary Vaynerchuk actually said it very well. I, I forget what the term is. Somebody here is going to have to correct me on that. It's like jab. What is it? Hook, 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 hook. And then jab, I think is, is the term. Basically, what he's saying is you want to make sure that you're giving value, 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 value before you ask for anything. Okay. Make sure you're giving to people before you have permission to ask from them. Okay. But guys, like it's okay if we're not there yet, because guess what? Like I mentioned earlier, we're nobody's training us on this stuff, right? This group that's grown over 11,000 people, right? We don't do any Facebook advertising. Very, very rarely do we do Facebook advertisements. The reason why we've grown to 11,000 people and we've created great relationships is because we give. We are focused on servant mentality. So then when we ask for a purchase, people buy. Because they've, we've built that no like, and trust factor. People join our academy every month because we've built that no like, and trust factor. It's going to be the same thing for you guys. Okay, so, so here's the deal. Um, that's your homework assignment. If you don't know the purpose of your group, that's okay. Write down a list of the things that you can get. Tips, hacks, helpful things. And we're going to break down the three things. I want you guys to write this down. Three things that you need in order to make your group not just a collection of people, but a community of people that are there for a common goal and interest. Your goal is to make a community of people. Somebody said something like, I want to, I want to focus on creating a community of people. And it was like a well-written like comment tonight on one of the posts. And I said, I was going to highlight it on the live and I don't remember where it is. Sorry. It was very well written because it's true. You don't want just a, a collection of bodies in a group. You want a community. You want people in there helping each other. 
You want people in there posting. You want people in there encouraging. You want people in there that want to hang out in there, that have already built a relationship with you, right? These are going to be the people that if you hop on an inbox and say, hey, how are you doing? They're happy to talk back to you. They're happy to have a back and forth exchange, right? So, I mean, some of this is going to be harder than others. I've got 11,000 people in this group. But that's how I started. When I first started, for the people that followed me for a long time, I was in everybody's inbox. Hey, how's it going? Did you find that training valuable? Da, 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 da. And it took a while, right? It took a while. I'm in Messenger with a lot of you guys that are in my academy and you guys message me and ask me questions. And I do what I can to get back to your message as soon as I possibly can. And that's how you build relationships, guys. That's how you build community, right? So let's talk about these three points. I want you to write these things down. This is what you need to create a community versus just a group of people, okay? All right, here we go. So number one, connection. You need to build connection, all right? Connection. So you guys have heard that, right? Every single direct sales company out there will say, you need to build relationships. You need to build relationships. Share, share, build relationships, right? In that tone, by the way. But that's what they say, build relationships, build relationships. But they don't tell you how, right? It's like, great, how do I do that, right? <laughs> By the way, if you guys are finding this training valuable, comment below, uh, you know, share, uh, tag your teens if you think that this is gonna be helpful for them. And, um, but yes, connection pieces, right? Create environments where members can connect with you and get to know you, okay? But you notice how I, I mentioned create environment. You have you are responsible for creating that environment because it is in your group. So how do you create that environment? There's a number of different things that you can do. Number 1, and here's the one that a lot of you are afraid of doing that you need to do yesterday, live video. What I'm doing right now, you need to do that as well. Go live. Go live. I promise you when you start going live, you're going to shake those nerves, people are going to hop on, and guess what's going to happen? You're going to realize when you just be yourself and you're genuine, okay? And you stop worrying about yourself and how you look and you're more focused on the people that you're there to serve, it becomes so much easier, so much easier, especially when you're going live to help someone. It's, isn't it easier to go much, to go live and share something versus selling? Of course it is, because people don't like to be sold to. And I'm not saying you don't sell, of course you sell. You're in business, in order for you to run a business, you need to make sales, so don't confuse that. But it's so much easier to go live when you know you're helping people. Go live and do something like share some tips, right? Share some tips, share some hacks, share your morning routine, share something that have to do with your, with maybe the, the niche in your company, whether it's cooking or beauty or fashion and give some helpful free advice, okay? Play a fun game. Do a weekly girls night in. You have to, you have to do a girls night in every week. I'm telling you, this is a great connection piece for your people and Paige Slos, who is a part of the solutions team, is brilliant at making girls night in scripts. And we have them exclusively, exclusively for the academy right now. When we make our uh, boutique website coming soon, we're gonna have them available for everyone, but it's having a dedicated night every single week where you come together and you create that culture of girls night in, right? Where people can come and participate, play some games, have some fun. And guess what? You can book parties doing this. You can make sales doing this because the whole point is to have eyeballs coming back to the group. Give people a reason to come back to the group. Give them an incentive to come back to the group. And the best way to do that is having weekly events. You guys notice Censure every Tuesday. What do they do? Censure users. They have a weekly event. Solutions for sellers, which is this group, right? What do we do every Sunday? We have a event because it's like our visit. It's like our weekly get together and hang out and chat, right? You can do the same thing in your group. It's such a great way to bring people in. And if you're worried about, okay, so how do I connect with people? Like, how do I bring new people in? You talk about it. You just talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Go outside your group, that really scary world where all your friends are hanging out and actually talk about it. Go in your stories and say, hey friends, I'm going, I'm doing a girl's night in tonight. I'm going to be giving away like, you know, a $5 coupon or whatever tonight. So come hang out with me. This is what we're going to be doing. Da, 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 da. I actually sell these products, but you know, come hang out with me. Just talk about it. So that's number one is connection. And I talked about live video, doing a girl's night in, um, sharing your family, sharing the things that you love and that you're passionate about, giving people more about you, share about who you are. Okay. 
opinion type posts, right? Should I wear this or should I wear that? Okay. And if you want to connect more with the people that you already have in your group, send them messages, message people, take the time out of your day. Okay. Homework assignment for everybody in here. Okay. Homework assignment. You guys ready? I know I already gave you one, but here's another one. <laughs> I want you to succeed. Send people messages in your VIP group saying, Hey friend, thank, I just, I just wanted to pop in and just say, thank you so much for being a part of my community. It really means a lot to me when you're in there. I'm trying to grow this group. I just wanted to say thank you so much for being a member of my community. Don't ask them for anything. Don't ask them to book a party. Don't ask them for a sale. Don't ask them to attend anything. Just say thank you. Just show them that you're grateful that they're even there. That's how you start connections with people. When you when they know you're not just trying to get one over on them, they're going to respond to you. And they're going to look at you like, oh, that means a lot to her. I should probably check out her posts, right? I should probably go and hang out in there. There does number one is connection. Number two. So I gave you a homework assignment. I gave you two. Value. I already talked about value, right? But here's the mentality behind value. I know you guys had a training post tonight that talked about value. So I'm not going to add too much more onto that. But what I will say is when you think about value driven content, I want you to think about what can I provide to my members that helps them in their lives, helps them improve their life, whether it's saving time, giving them helpful information or saving money. Okay. Those are three things that you can like think about right? What can I give to my members that's going to help them save time, have a better life, save money, or maybe information, statistics, facts that have to do with, with maybe your niche, maybe outside of your niche. Again, if you sell makeup, here's a great example. If you sell makeup, okay, and you have brushes that you sell, here's a fun fact that you can share. Did you know that there was XYZ type of bacteria on your makeup brushes when you don't wash them for X amount of period? That's free value, right? That's free value. Guys, pound the hearts if this is valuable. Hashtag value in the comments if you guys are getting you guys are, are getting some good information here that's helpful that you think that you can bring into your groups. Need the girls night in. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to have um we have scripts available for girls night in. It's in our academy at the moment. We're making it exclusive for academy members. Eventually we'll have it available for the sellers boutique, but we have this incredible graphic artist that's making our girls night in events and she's just making I got I got to brag on Paige. Whoever knows Paige, give her some love in the comments, but she makes incredible like graphics and just she's very thoughtful about it. And she uses this in her business. And this is what's gained her parties every week and sales and engagement. And she's she's got a thriving community. So she does a, she does such a great such a great job with that. So I'm excited to to release some of that stuff later. Um, but it's a weekly event. That's all that's all it is. Okay, so value. I just talked about value. What type of value you can give to your group. And then the last piece is entertainment, entertainment. Okay. Uh, I need the fun factor. Okay. Uh, it, it, when it comes to your group and creating that community culture and having fun in your group is, is, is at the top. Okay. People need to have fun in your group. And in order to do that, one great way to do it, I know we keep saying it, but it's, it's having weekly events, right? Putting some games in there, going live, being silly, okay? Doing some fun live unboxing. But if you are if you don't have fun in your group and you're just kind of copy pasting things and just posting and just kind of crossing your fingers hoping for the best, that's just not a good strategy for growth. So I want you to think about these three, connection, connection value-driven content, okay? Give people a reason to come back into your group. What is the purpose, okay? Just because you have a business and you have a group does not mean that they need to come back and hang out with you. You have to give them the reason to come back. And then the fun factor, okay? Let's talk about the fun factor for a second. Imagine being a student in school. We were all students at one point. And you're sitting in class and you're watching, you're in the most boring class of the day. And your teacher is doing the education. Education, 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 education. And she's doing all the things, right? And you're sitting there and you're, you just want to go to sleep. But then you go into your next class, another boring topic, maybe, right? But your teacher's playing games. Maybe she's making a whole game out of the whole thing. And suddenly you're paying attention. Suddenly you're learning. Suddenly you're, you're, you're in tune and you're participating and you're engaging. You see the difference between an unengaged environment and an engaging environment? All it needs is some fun. Add some fun factor in there. Have it fun. Has, have some fun, right? Go live if you can. Show your face. Show your branding. 
and just create environments where people can have a good time. Because if you can create that environment in your VIP group, all of a sudden your group becomes a hangout spot. And that is exactly where you want people to hang out at, right? Okay. <laughs> I love games. I may do too many. <laughs> Holly, it's okay to have it sporadic, right? You want a healthy mix of content. You want to have some value. You want to have some connection pieces, let people get to know you and then sprinkle in some games. But like the really fun stuff, save it for your weekly events, right? Have people, give people a reason to come to those things. Because when you have more people coming to that weekly event, that's going to be more eyeballs on your business. That's that's more eyeballs on what you're doing, that event itself. And then when you go live and you start talking about anything, right? I mentioned VIP group script on this live and we sold VIP group script, okay? And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that when you can get people to come to your lives and you're giving them that value and you're telling them the why behind things and you're sharing and you're becoming that source for someone, then they have a reason to that no like and trust factor, right? Then they want to purchase. They're already hanging out with you. They like you. So they're going to be like, where's your shopping link? <laughs> That's just how it works, right? All right, guys. If you found this valuable, hashtag value in the comments. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. Did you guys enjoy tonight's training? Did you guys get some value tonight? I hope you did. I, I will see you guys later. Bye, y'all.